Hi, my name's Austin. Welcome to this first episode of Study the Greats made exclusively for Drumeo. You may know me from my YouTube channel where I do these videos a lot, but if you don't, essentially what I do with this series is I try to isolate some really cool concepts from some of the world's top players and attempt to transcribe them out and break them down for you. And the goal is to really give you a bit of a deeper insight into the playing of these world-class drummers, right? So in this first episode, we're going to be looking at a really cool section from a Todd Zuckerman drum solo. So let's take a look at what he's doing and see if we can break it down. Okay, so this is Todd Zuckerman playing a solo during his visit to Drumeo. And there are a lot of really cool concepts and ideas throughout this entire solo. But there's one section in particular that always stands out to me. So let's watch it real quick and see what's going on. That's pretty awesome, right? Okay, now let's go ahead and watch it with the transcription. All right, so there's a lot of stuff going on here. So let's head to the drum set and see if we can break it down. Okay, so the first thing we need to understand about this entire section is that it's all based on 16th note triplets, which we would count as 1 to 2 to 2 to 2 to 2 to 3 to 2 to 2 to 4 to 2 to 2 to 1, okay? And we can really break it all down into two distinct phrases. So we'll start with the first phrase, which is one beat long, and the pattern is kick, left, left, right, left, right. So I'll demonstrate that for you at three different tempos. Okay, so that's phrase one. Now the second phrase is two beats long, and it starts off the same way as the first, with kick left left, but the rest of it is just single strokes orchestrated around the toms. Now Todd plays a pretty big drum set, and he has a lot of toms that he can play on, but if you have a smaller drum set like this, you can just play more notes per tom. But here's a demonstration of what that would look like. Okay, so now that we have those two phrases, we need to combine them together to make one measure of four for a time. And the way that Todd does this is he cycles the first phrase twice, and then he plays the second phrase, and that equals one measure of four four. And at this point, we can also add in the left foot on the hi-hat, which is going to be on the end of every beat. So when we put that all together, it sounds like this. So now we understand what 
he's playing. But what makes a section really musical and memorable is the way that he constructs it. So if we broke this thing down into a form, we could rename phrase one as the A section, and phrase two as the B section, and so on. So if we look at the transcription, the form that he plays would be A, A, B, A, A, B, 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 and then we could call the last bar like a C section, okay? So let's watch him play it one more time and pay attention to the form. All right, so the main concepts to take away from this are repetition and structure. So what I would encourage you to do is to turn this into a little exercise where you play the same exact form and the same subdivisions, but come up with your own little uh, patterns and phrases inside of that framework. So I'll give you a little demonstration of how this works. Now another thing you could do is play in a different subdivision, like 16th notes. And then you could try to mix subdivisions together, like 16th notes and 16th note triplets. So the main thing I want you to take away from this is the power of repeating coherent phrases and constructing them into a musical form. So try this out next time you practice, get creative with it, come up with your own phrasings and your own forms. And when you do that, you're essentially creating your own little drum solos at that point, which is awesome, right? So that's gonna do it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.